Hey, yo, what's up and welcome. I'm the one and only West Coast King and welcome back to season number four with LAFC. We're back, baby. But before we get into the season four stuff as far as roster changes go and the MLS draft and things like that, we have to go over the roster changes that are coming for season number four. I said back when we started this career that these rules that we're putting in place are going to be a work in progress and they may change as we move forward. It's time to make those changes. And the first changes we're going to make are pretty easy ones and they have to do with the MLS draft. We're just going to scale that back from four picks per season down to three picks per season. The reason for that is I feel like we're getting too many Youth Academy players into the team too quickly. And that's flooding the team with Youth Academy players and it's bloating our roster size. Both of which I just don't want to do. So we're just going to reduce the number of picks per year from four to three. And maybe even in the future it might go down to two picks. We'll have to see. I think three is going to be a good number though. And to go along with that, we're going to reduce the quality of player that we can get per round in the draft as well round one is going to stay the same any player that i want on the draft board round two we're going to go down to 75 max potential or lower and then round three is going to be 70 max potential or or lower just again to try to scale back the quality of players that we're getting because our team is is a little bit too good and the other quick and easy rule change we're going to make is i'm going to do away with the international roster rule and the reason for that is in real life in MLS, they do have the international roster spot rule, but players, once they're in the league for a few seasons, normally get their green card in the United States, and then they no longer take up an international roster spot on their MLS rosters. With no way for me to really monitor that or, or implement that into this series, it just doesn't make sense for us to keep that rule around. I'm going to do my best to try to keep it, you know, get as many Americans as possible or, or try to keep it domestic heavy with Americans, Canadians, and Mexicans, but I'm not going to really monitor the exact number of international players we have anymore. Now, another change that we're going to make this season is regarding the designated player rule, and we're still going to have the three designated player spots just like always, but we're just going to reduce the wages that make someone a designated player. So right now it's set at $12,000 per week. Anybody making that is a designated player. We're going to scale that back down to $9,000 per week. And hopefully that creates some interesting situations where a player will grow in our team and then want to become a designated player, want that designated player money. And either we're going to have to make him a designated player and sell someone else, or we're going to have to sell that player for right now, I haven't had one player even come close to making $12,000 per week in wages that isn't already a designated player. So hopefully with that change, that'll create some interesting situations in the coming seasons. And the last thing that I'm going to change heading into next season, and this could end up being maybe the most significant thing, is going to be increasing the number of injuries that we're going to be seeing. Honestly, in three seasons with LAFC, we've had one injury that, will, that lasted more than a month, and that was this past season. Andrew Michaels hurt his hamstring or his, his ankle or something. He was out one month. That was it. That's the longest injury we've had this entire series. Injuries happen a lot in this sport. We should be seeing more than what we have, and that is really where an MLS team is tested. Most of the time, they do not have the depth to cope with an injury, especially to a designated player. And that's where we would also really struggle. So I'm going to increase the injuries and that should see us tested a little bit more this season. So that is going to do it for the actual rule changes. However, we're still going to be changing the way that we bring players in and just the quality of players that we're bringing in. And we're going to look at the quality of the players that are already in this team because I think that some of you mentioned quite clearly that it's too good. We're too good. The series, it is a little bit too easy. And that is because we've allowed our team to get just, just better than everybody else. And when I started this series, I was trying to create with these rules, a realistic MLS experience compared to the MLS in real life. What I failed to take into the equation was how the MLS operates in FIFA. And that is very unrealistic to real life within the first two or three seasons most of the, the bigger players don't get re-signed and they leave for free. They don't even get sold. They just don't get re-signed and they leave their teams for free, which is rather disappointing. 
but it also creates a big drop off in the talent level in MLS. And those, those teams generally don't go out and replace those players. So we have to take that into consideration here. And even more so than just, just that, I was actually having uh, a long conversation with Tim. If you don't know who Tim is, uh, I'll leave his links down in the description below, both YouTube and uh, Twitch. Very good career mode guy as well. But we were talking about, you know, de designated players maybe for this series or just designated players in general for an MLS series. And I got to looking at just the the roster, the, the player pool for MLS when you start a career. And that's including Miguel Almiron and Sebastian Giovinco and some of the players that are leaving MLS in real life. When you start an MLS career, I believe there's only 15 players in the league that are 76 rated or higher. That's not even one per team. We have four on this team currently. It's too many. It is way too many players. Our team is just too good. And we're definitely going to be scaling that back going into next season. There are going to be some players that are going to be leaving this team. So let's go ahead and talk about that. We already know that Diego Rossi is going to be leaving. As soon as that transfer window opens, we'll get offers in. He will be going most likely to Europe. Actually, he's unhappy. I didn't even realize that as well. Probably because he wants to leave. So we're going to make that happen. Hector Herrera is going to be leaving. And actually, he played well in the second half of the season and in the playoffs. If it wasn't for us scaling things back, I'd probably keep him as a designated player. However, the problem here is that we also have Mark Anthony K, who's 76 rated. Basically, I have to choose between the two, and I'm choosing Mark Anthony K. He is just better offensively and defensively. He makes a bigger impact than Hector Herrera. He's four years younger than Hector Herrera, and I would rather have him in my team. So Hector Herrera will be leaving. Mark Anthony K, however, will become a designated player on this team. He's 76 rated. He pretty much needs to be a designated player. He's one of the best midfielders in the league at this point. I just failed to realize that. And we're going to make him a designated player. So going into next season, right now on this roster, we'll have Carlos Vela, who's still going to be a DP. I mean, he was the second leading goal scorer in the league this year. And then we'll have Mark Anthony K as well. As for the rest of the roster, I'm not sure what's going to happen with Walker Zimmerman. He's 75 rated, though his wages are probably not going to go up from what they currently are, which is $7,000 per week in wages. I don't think he goes up much more than that. So he probably won't reach designated player status. But... If we get a big offer in for him or an offer from a top five league in Europe being England, Spain, Germany, France, or Italy, if an offer comes in from there, he's probably going to be on his way out as well. Julian Green might be the most complicated situation out of everyone on this team. He's going to be up for a new contract this coming season. He's currently on $7,000 per week in wages. With the new rule making the $9,000 the cutoff for designated players, he might want designated player money. If he wants designated player money, I'm not going to resign him. I will sell him in January. If he doesn't want designated player money and he wants to come back, I'll bring him back. I'm going to start him at the center attacking mid position behind whoever is going to play striker. We'll talk about that in a second. And then I'm going to slide Brett Evans back to play next to Mark Anthony K in the midfield because Brett Evans is growing a lot in defensive attributes, which I'm not training and he's becoming a bit of a monster. He's quickly going to become a designated player as well, I think. But we'll, we'll have to see what happens with him. That's beside the point. Right now, that's not a problem. But Julian Green, we'll see what happens with him. If he wants to, if he wants designated player money, he'll be gone. If he doesn't, he'll come back and play. He'll be a starter on this team next season. He has to be. He's 74 rated. Now, about that striker position. Most likely, it's going to be Christian Ramirez coming back and being the starting striker up top once again. He had 12 goals last year, which was only two behind Carlos Vela. He still scores at a pretty decent rate for us. Didn't do a lot in the second half of the season or in the playoffs. Actually, Gerard Payne Herrero outscored him in the playoffs 3-1. to one, But I don't think we're going to be able to bring GPH back. I think he's going to want designated player money. He's up for a new contract. He's a striker, which means he already plays the most expensive position on the team. He grew by three overall. He's worth $7.5 million. I'm betting a team is going to come in and offer something for him. It may not be a huge deal, but I'm betting a, a team from a top five league in Europe gives us an offer. So probably not going to see Gerard Peña Herrero next season either. So if all the players that we just talked about do end up leaving the club, and those players are Diego Rossi, Hector Herrera, Gerard Peña Herrero, and Julian Green, and also keeping in mind that Betashore is leaving the team because he's retiring. 
this is what we're looking at for a starting 11 going into next season i'd say that's a lot closer to the rest of the league the competitive balance is a little bit uh, is restored a little bit but we do have another designated player spot available i think i'm going to end up signing a winger to 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 fill that designated player spot and benzai will end up as a, a kind of a super sub this season maybe season five if we do go five seasons at that point he would end up taking over for carlos vela vela is declining quite quickly his physicals are down a lot he only has 70 sprint speed now his stamina is only 63 can't play back-to-back -back games technically still a very good player but the physicals he just he just can't do it at a high level anymore so he'll he'll be a designated player this season he, he kind of has to be but uh yeah, it would be season five when we start to see that shift in, in Carlos Vela going to more of a, a reserve role and not being a designated player anymore. So I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to go for a winger as our last designated player and, and a pretty decent one at that. He might end up being the best player on the team. I don't know what his rating exactly is going to be because I'm not sure exactly who I'm getting, but I have a pretty good idea. So now we are set to get into season number four. And of course, we're starting with the MLS draft. So let's get into this thing. With our first round pick this year, I feel like striker is going to be an area of need on our team. If we're losing Gerard Peña Herrera, which again, I'm assuming that we're going to, we're going to need another striker. So I'm going to go with Fabio Barros here. And I'm actually looking at this kid. I don't remember scouting Portugal. And given that his physicals and some of his ratings are absolutely stupidly good, and I don't know what his slide tackle is, I think he's a scout of future star. But I didn't use a scout of future star. Maybe someone gifted one to me? I don't really know. I'm not sure what is going on with Fabio Barros, but he looks like a pretty good player. His over, his potential isn't great, but it, it could change. We'll, we'll have to see, but a striker's an area of need. He looks like a decent one. We're going to take him. He's 15 years old, so I can't actually call him up right now. Once he hits 16 years old, then we'll get him into the first team. With our second round pick, I'm going to go with Frank Park out of Canada. He actually has a pretty decent overall of 58 for not very high potential. Only 75 over, uh, maximum potential, which is the limit for our second round pick. But I'm actually hoping I can play him at center attacking mid. Just in case Julian Green leaves, we might be at, at a bit of a loss in that, in that position. So uh, even if we keep Julian Green, he, we're actually going to be a little bit short there. So Frank Park is going to be our second round pick. We'll have to see where his best position is going to be. And with our third and final pick in this MLS draft, we're going to go with Tafari Afrani out of Ghana. The third round is, is, is going to be hard to find some impact players. Mostly, we're just going to be looking at squad players here in this, in this last round. And Afrani actually doesn't look too bad. Already 51 rated. His physicals actually look somewhat decent. Technical abilities, uh, we won't talk about that. But it's the third round pick. It's going to be kind of meh. So Afrani will be maybe a, a squad center back, a squad player for us this year. So before we get into the designated player situation and looking for a new designated player, let's go ahead and re-sign some of the players that we have going into expiring contracts next season. Namely, Gerard Peña Herrero and Julian Green. Let's see where we stand with those two, if we're going to have them back next season or not, because that's kind of kind of dictate how we go about filling our last designated player spot so let's start with julian green this one's really going to kind of dictate where everyone's playing where their position's going to be next season so let's go ahead he's going to be a starter if he returns so important or crucial let's go important first team player i think that's what he already had though he's good with that, that that's good um he wants a four-year deal that's fine i mean i'm, I'm going into this with the mindset that he's going to be a starter, I, I don't want a release clause. He doesn't either. 8K per week in wages. Wow, I, I thought he would want a little bit more than that. Given that he was already on 7,000. 8K per week? That's fair. I mean, 74 rated, I'm not really sure if that would really qualify him as a designated player. He could be, he might not be. So, he's kind of on the, on, on the cusp there. We'll go ahead and do this deal, though. He's going to come back, and he's not going to be a designated player. I'm happy that he's going to be back. I wanted Julian Green in this team. So now we have Gerard Pena Herrero. Slightly less op optimistic about this one, but let's let's see what we, we're gonna do with him. He would be he's gonna have to probably be a starter next year if he does come back. It's gonna be the money though. That's gonna be the real issue here. A five-year deal. Wow, that's wasn't expecting that. That's a long-term contract. I'm, I'm happy to do it though. They don't want a release clause. Everything is going really really well. Now what do they want for money? and they don't they don't put the offer in Ooh, that hurts 
they, at least Julian Green, they came with that offer of 8,000. I don't know what to do with Gerard Pena Herrero. Let's go 8,000 as well. Let's see what they say about 8,000. He's only a 1,000 for, for right now. So let's go 8,000 for that. Let's go like a 20K bonus. 25K bonus. Eh, let's go 30. Let's go 35K bonus. That might be a little bit much, but we have we have 62 million dollars that's not a problem um yeah let's let's submit that what do they say about that that's fair so he's not a designated player although again i i don't i don't think it's right to bring him back anyway so after much debate and i've been sitting here just thinking about this for about 20 minutes now uh given that given that what i've seen in the comments you guys mostly want to see christian ramirez back as the striker anyway and the fact that I've given uh, GPH chances to start in the past, last season. Didn't play that well as a starter. Much more effective coming in as a sub. And I think we could get the same effect if we used Edward Apoku as a late game sub at striker. And he's only 19 and 73 overall already. From Spain, no less. It just doesn't make sense for him to be here. And he should be in Europe. Uh, he should be playing for somebody over there. So, when the transfer window opens, even though I could keep him... I'm still going to sell him. It just, it, it doesn't make sense for him to be at this team at this point. So as for the other players that are going to need a, a new contract next season, Rossi, obviously he's leaving. Uh, Clark's out on loan, so we'll wait till he comes back to deal with that situation. Vela, I'm going to wait until the transfer window opens in January to give him a new contract. Just wait till the next season actually starts in game to, to open up negotiations with him. Lee Wynn, I'm not going to resign. As a matter of fact, I might either trade him or just flat out release him. He just, he's just not effective anymore for us, unfortunately. Uh, Cantu, I think I am going to resign just because I'm a little bit short on players at this point. And then Wolf also is out on loan, so we'll wait till he comes back to, uh, to determine whether or not we want to keep him in the team. So right now, the only other player I'm going to resign is Eric Cantu. So now we can go designated player shopping. We have three that I was looking at. Omar Abdulrahman, Aminu Umar, and Romulo Otero. Starting with Abdulrahman, this was really going to be an option if we weren't able to bring Julian Green back. With Green still in the team and now in the starting center attacking mid position, I no longer need Abdulrahman. Although with five star skills, he could be a really, really good designated player option. Although I think that... I'd rather bring him in at the start of a career rather than right now as he's 29 at this point. He'd start to decline kind of quickly. So if you were to bring him in at the start of a career when he's like 26, 27, that could be a really, really good pickup for you in a career mode. So that leaves Aminu Umar and Romulo Otero. Otero 76 rated at 28 years old. Four-star, four-star player. Looks, looks pretty decent. But if you look at our roster now going into next year, our designated players are going to be Carlos Vela, who's on the decline. And Mark Anthony K, who is also 76 rated and is not going to get any better than that. At least maybe he gets to 77, but I kind of doubt it. So what we're kind of missing on this team is actually a star player. And I know I said this whole episode, I'm trying to, you know, kind of take down the level of our team a little bit. But adding Amina Umar at 80 rated, it's not going to do too much considering we're losing two 80 rated players already. So I'm going to go with Amina Umar. We can get him on a free transfer as well, which is even better. And uh, he's going to be our third designated player next season. And hopefully, the star of the team next year. So let's iron out this contract with Aminu Umar. Crucial squad role. Four-year contract. He asked for that, by the way, which is really, really nice. No release clause. Just down to the salary. He's only making 23 k playing. I think he's playing in Turkey. Uh, so let's give, him, let's give him something. Actually, we're going to increase it a little bit. Let's go for like... Let's go for 30, 35K? Let's, let's go for 35K. I'm assuming he signed that contract when he was maybe mid-70s. So we'll go 35K. Let's give him a 70, $80,000 bonus. Now nah, let's go, let's go 100,000. He's a star player. I mean, he's going to be our star player. So let's go $100,000. I should at least get the ball rolling. That actually might get the job done altogether. It does. And we have three designated players now. I like it. I mean, Umar is now a member of LAFC. So we have hit the January transfer window now. And before we do anything in this window, this is what the team is looking like. This is our starting 11 as it stands right this moment. Ramirez up top, 
Julian Green in behind him. We have Amar Uminu over here on the left-hand side. Evans now playing in the deeper role, which I think he... If he stays in that spot, hopefully he does, he's going to have a massive season from right there. Mark Anthony K beside him, and then Carlos Vela on the right-hand side, as always. Pacheco, Zimmerman, Michaels, and Bernal, who I think has pretty good p potential. He actually has... Uh, the status showing great potential, which means he has at least 80 potential. And then we have Ty Miller, of course, in net. It's a pretty decent starting 11. In the reserves, we have Edward Apoku, who is our backup striker heading into the season at this point. Ben Zai, who probably next year, if we do another year, would find his way into the starting 11, most likely replacing Carlos Vela. Uh, Ja'Cory Hayes, who had a great year last year, we'll, we'll see. He might end up with more playing time if, if we end up getting an offer for Julian Green. We got an offer for him last year. Maybe we get another one for him this year. If we do, we'll probably end up selling him. And then Ja'Cory Hayes will have a bigger role in the team. We have Enrique Vera, who had a good year last year as well. Cariche had a decent season filling in for uh, for Andrew Michaels at times. Atuesta, who has really just not been able to play his way into much playing time on this team. But he at least is up on the bench now at the start of the season. And then we have Silvestre, who's a weird situation. Because I took a player from the last draft... And I didn't want to delete him, so I wanted to, to send him to another team in the league. I did a swap deal with LA Galaxy and brought back Silvestre, which is actually not a bad thing because apparently I sent Cordoba out on loan for no apparent reason, who was supposed to be my backup goalkeeper, but now we have Silvestre, so that worked out well. So he's, he's going to be our backup goalkeeper until Cordoba gets back, then we'll figure out what we're going to do with that. We have Calderon, Cantu, Reeves, Park, the new Park that we just drafted, and then Lee Wynn and Fuentes. We have Peyton Herrero, Herrera, and Rossi. But all three of those guys will be sold as soon as possible. They will not be on the roster heading into the next season. So that's what we're looking like. We're going to end this one here. Next episode, we'll get into the transfer window. And we'll also be having to pick up a couple of extra players here. Because we're actually kind of low on players after everyone left and... We're selling more players. I, I thought we were going to have more than that, but we don't. So we'll have to we'll have to look at the free agency. I already found some interesting players with some pretty interesting names. I, I can't wait to show you who those were going to be. And uh, we might we might do a couple of other deals as well to, to add a little bit of depth to this team. So that's where we're standing. We'll see who we get offers in for next time. And we'll add a couple of extra players. And uh, we'll be set for season number four. So that's it for this one. If you did enjoy it, make sure to let me know by leaving a like below. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see you we come back next time to kick off the fourth season with LAFC. See ya.